Hello and welcome to Retro Core. Now you're probably wondering why am I wearing a suit? Well the fact is that I'm going away this week on a business trip. Yep, I hate work. But that's not going to stop me releasing a new Retro Core. So, what I'll do is I'll record these bits now, edit them on the road and post up on YouTube from the hotel. Yay, okay. Maybe not. Okay, anyway. So in today's show we're going to take a look at some arcade racing games. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not. Why not sit back and enjoy what's coming up? Outrunners is actually the third game in the Outrun series, or at least in the arcades it is. It follows on from Turbo Outrun, and unlike Turbo Outrun which is actually an upgrade to the original Outrun, Outrunners is an all new arcade game, which was released in 1992. The game runs on Sega's Sister Multi 32 hardware, and was one of the last successful 2D games released by Sega, before they went into all the polygon stuff. The game features some really lovely parallax scrolling, quite similar to that found in Power Drift which was released 4 years earlier, but now it moves a lot faster and seems to be a lot smoother as well. Like the original Outrun, you can take lots of different routes throughout the race. Now the thing is, even though the stages are a lot bigger and they have a lot more impressive graphical flair than the original Outrun, I don't seem to remember them as much as the original. Uh, maybe that's because I played the original so much. But that's not to say Outrunners is a bad game, it is actually a very good Sega arcade racer. Unfortunately there doesn't seem to be as many enemy cars on, well if you can call them an enemy, okay there doesn't seem to be as many other cars on the road as the original Outrun, which might make it seem a little bit on the easy side. But at least you get a choice of many different cars to race as, unlike the original where you only had a Ferrari. Okay, coming from two Italian clone arcade manufacturers, ABM and I hope I pronounce this right, Gekas, or at least that's what I think it says, they bring us what is rumored to be a sprite hack of uh, the Spanish company Gelicos. Um, oh, I can't remember what their game is called now, but they made a game similar to this, and apparently this is meant to be a sprite hack, although ABM and the Gekas say that this game is 100% original. But what we can at least say is original is the name of the game, Blombica. What the hell is a Blombica? Maybe it means something in Italian, I don't know. Anyway, this game, for what it is, is not that bad. It gets a lot of stick in the uh, gaming uh, world on the internet, but to be honest, it's not that bad. The car controls quite well, although it does have some crazy physics when you crash. And to be honest, I do like the actual engine sound effects. They might be a, a bit overpowering at times, but overall they really do add to the feel of the game. There is one thing which I don't like about this game though, and that is the digitized uh, images. It looks like some colorblind rat painted them. They're absolutely awful. <laughs> Get her. McLaren F1. 
ミッションを選んでください。Sega Super GT in North America, or for the rest of the world, Scud Racer, which actually stands for Sports Car Ultimate Drive, was Sega's first ever Model 3 hardware game, and it is definitely a game that really showed the power of the Model 3 hardware. I remember seeing Scud Racer for the first time, I think it was back in 1996, and being completely blown away by it. Unfortunately, Scud Racer never got a home port, although, according to the UK Sega Saturn magazine, Scud Racer were planning a Dreamcast version of it. There are actually some early rolling demos of, I、um, wouldn't really say Scud Racer, but、mm, levels based upon Scud Racer、uh, running on early Dreamcast SDKs. But it was never made into a full game, unfortunately. Actually, this version of Scud Racer, which we're looking at now, is known as Scud Racer Plus. Now, Scud Racer Plus was released one year later in 1997. And this allowed players to play on four courses in reverse, which apparently the original didn't. Also, there's the Super Beginner course, which is basically just an oval track inside a giant children's playhouse. It's actually quite crazy, to be honest, and really doesn't fit the game, but you know, it's a nice little extra. Now, in Japan, there are many unique games in the arcades, and one game that was really popular in the mid 90s was this. This is Taito's Chase Bombers, which came out in 1994. As you can clearly see, it's a,、uh, well, basically, it's a card game, but for the arcades, using sprite based technology. Now, at this time, I'm pretty sure Daytona was released, and compared to Daytona, Chase Bombers did look a little bit,、um, how can you say, well, a bit old. And the fact that it plays quite slow as well didn't really help it. But for some reason, this game was really popular. It was everywhere in the arcades in Japan. Unfortunately, these days the controls are really sluggish. The car doesn't really go where you want it to go. And when you throw off your weapon, which you seem to collect multiple、uh, versions of, it doesn't really go where you think it's gonna land. So basically, winning the race is what you might call lucky. But still, it's definitely one of the more unique titles that were released in the arcades in the mid 90s, and one that you should definitely at least check out in two player mode.
Core Select. Core Select. And here we go with Jellicoe's Super GT24. Now you might be thinking this looks pretty good, especially for a Jellicoe game. Well that's because it runs on Sega's Model 2 hardware. Now while the game doesn't try to imitate Daytona, it certainly does try to imitate Ridge Racer. In fact the way the game controls is very similar to Ridge Racer. Maybe a little bit too similar, but nowhere near as good if you know what I mean. In typical Jellicoe fashion though, they've gone for the easy option. Just make one course and split it into two. Then again, that's also like Ridge Racer. So what we have here is basically one big course, which you can either go around the short way or the long way. Now to be honest, I do actually like the design of the course, it's pretty unique. But the fact that you can go around it in about one and a half minutes, and there's not much else to do, and it certainly doesn't have the replay value of Ridge Racer, makes this game a little bit on the, well, simple side. But great for the quick blast in the arcade, but when they ported this to the Sega Saturn, um. Uh, there wasn't much reason to buy it really, because all you got was the short and long course. So it's still one of my favorite games there of all time. That was Scud Racer. And uh, what did you think of that Chase Bombers by Taito? Really weird. A little bit slow, but in multiplayer, it's great fun. Um, I wonder where they got the idea for that one. Mario Kart, I guess. Anyway, coming up next is another one of my favorite games in the arcade. This is Daytona 2. Select the level of the normal level bar. Please choose manual or automatic transmission. Automatic. Gentlemen, start your engines. In 1998, five years after the first Daytona rolled out, came Daytona 2 Battle on the Edge. It follows in the tradition of the original game, with only three courses ranked beginner, medium, and hard. There's even time trial and mirror tracks too all accessed in the same manner as the original. Even some of the voices used are the same, but where this game really does show off is the difference in the graphics. The original Daytona USA ran on the Model 2 board, while this runs on the Model 3 board. The difference in visuals is clearly obvious, however, it doesn't seem to hold the same charm as the original, or at least in my eyes it doesn't. How does it play though? Is it a better game? Well, now the AI is smarter, the physics are better, and there's even a new play mechanic in the shape of slipstreaming. These new additions do add a lot to the game, resulting in yet another excellent Sega racer. A few months after the release of Battle on the Edge came the Power Edition. This version featured a few gameplay tweaks, the original Hornet from the first Daytona, and loses the dome from the beginner's course.
This is Nancy. A bunch of drug heads have totaled a shop and are running away north on Route 101. The suspects are driving a blue convertible. How you handle the beginning is everything. Good luck. Roger. Have you got it? Now this game actually got a release on the Super Famicom and the Mega Drive. However, both versions are pretty poor. The arcade game on the other hand is great fun. I'm not too sure about the hardware specs, but I believe it to be similar to SCI, but now with an updated main CPU to help with the raster effects. Actually, I did just say this game is great fun, but that's probably more down to the sheer craziness of it than actual gameplay, which to be honest, is pretty much the same as the original Chase HQ. Now however, we have a cool first person viewpoint for most stages, coupled with some crazy jumps, driving through restaurants and all manner of destructive driving. All in all, it's a great blast, but it's easy to see why the home ports are on a patch on this. For those who didn't know, Rave Racer is actually the sequel to Ridge Racer. Well, there was a Ridge Racer too, but that doesn't really count. So this was released on July 16th in 1995 and it runs on the Namco System 22 hardware. One thing that did really improve upon the original Ridge Racer is that this one can have up to 8 players playing at once. Which was really good if you could actually find a couple of systems linked up together. Unfortunately the game never did get ported to the Playstation, but it did see a very rare glimpse running on the power vr graphics processor for pcs but unfortunately that was never released either so unfortunately the only way to play rave racer at the moment at home is using mame or another emulator and to be honest mame doesn't emulate a rave racer perfectly just yet still if you've never played it it's definitely worth giving a shot it features three new courses and a total of 12 songs including the original five Are you fed up with racing games where you play as a born racer in some sports car? Well how about a racing game where you actually play as the police? Yeah that's right! In Cisco Heat, you take control of the local law enforcement and take part in the national championship police car steeplechase. It must be said for the time the graphics are spectacular. Jellico really have made great use of spray technology with this release. Quite surprising really when you think about all the subpar crap Jellico have turned out over the years. Mind you, while this game does look really good, it doesn't play all that well, 
The controls are a little bit sluggish these days, although I'm sure back in the day, or at least I remember when I played it back in the day, I really did think this was a really good racing game, better than Outrun believe it or not. But it's aged quite badly, especially in the control department. So as I was saying, the controls are pretty uh, sluggish, and when you do the 90 degree turns, you don't seem to have an awful lot of control of where your car comes out on the other side of the turn. Yeah, of course you can still turn left and right as you're doing the 90 degree turn, but since you can't see what's on the other side of the road, you end up just either driving too far to the left or too far to the right. Still, it's a great blast even all these years later. exciting race. Okay, put your hand up if you like monster trucks. Yeah, quite a few hands have gone up there. Everybody loves monster trucks, and that's why you should check out Double Axle. Coming from Taito, this is one of the more unique arcade games. To be honest, as a racing game, it's not very good, but the best part about it are the bonus rounds. That's right, in the bonus round, you have to go against an opponent and see who can run over the most buses, cars and destroy the most objects. Nothing more satisfying than doing that. So we come to the end of another retro core, and I do apologize for the really cheap in between sections in this show, but unfortunately I only had 20 minutes to get them filmed before I had to go to work. Typical eh? Maybe next time I'll be able to do a little bit better. So what did you think of those arcade racing games? Did you enjoy them? I know I certainly enjoyed some of them, some of them are a bit crappy, and um, some of them get a lot of sticks such as Bloomy Racer, whatever that means, or Bloomy Car sorry. Um, they get a lot of stick, which I don't think is entirely necessary, because they are, um, well that game is not that bad. Anyway, write in the comments below which you think was your favourite game, and see you in the next show. And don't forget to check out Battle of the Ports coming this Saturday. It's scheduled for upload, what will it be? It's a 2D shooter, that's for sure. Show you.